so much for tuning in to the Auto School with your girl Slim Soul, of course, the car buying expert, Mr. Louis Heron. If you're listening to us, thank you for listening on 96.3 KISS FM. And if you're tuning in to your local television stations, we thank you for tuning in to the Auto School. We're bringing you education each and every week. Make sure you know all about anything you want to know about the car buying business, anything right here on 96.3 KISS FM and also on your local stations. And today, we're going to be talking about six common mistakes customers make when buying a car. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, I'll tell you this. Those that, uh, that are joining us, maybe joining us for the first time, have never tuned in. Uh, television are never tuned in 96.3 KISS FM uh, this show is 100% about trying to do our my best job of educating consumers from the inside perspective That's from right. the dealer perspective right. so consumers have, have expectations that that are met and hopefully bridge the gap between buying and selling and make the car buying experience positive fun um, it's the second lar largest purchase you'll ever make inside a house right exactly mm -hmm. you know and you know what's really disturbing uh, to me Selena is if you read any of the books the car tips from the non-car people. Right. Um, it, it, it's just, they're disturbing to me. And some of them have, have merit. Some of right. them there's some value there, no doubt. But you know, when when a, a, a tip or a book will tell you, don't show your excitement, don't get excited in front of the salesperson or dealer. That to me is crazy, because um, what that's basically saying is, since you don't know what's going on, don't let them know you're excited because they'll take advantage of you. The, right. the reality is, you should know what's going on, and you should make sure they that they know you are pumped up. I mean, you're getting your brand new vehicle. It should be fun. Forget all that mess about don't you no, know if you know what's going Be on excited about it <laughs> I'm telling you if you know what's going on that's the bottom line well, that's really how consumers uh, I mean I'm be honest as a consumer I know most of us most of us not all of us think that when we go to the dealership they're gonna get over on I know. So, look I'm not gonna put on I'm not gonna put my game face on right let's go ahead and have my stone face on well so when I go he know or she knows I mean business well let me tell you something we're gonna talk about a couple of tips that are so critical and you're gonna battle me on one of them I'm gonna tell you that right now okay but I look forward to that that challenge because I need to understand better how a consumer thinks and feels because because um, I believe that when, you, when you're buying and selling a car, that a lot of times you just said, we're scared the dealer's going to get over on us. Right. Well, guess what? What about the guy, that, the, 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 the mortgage, the loan officer? You scared he's going to get over on you? If not, why? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. What about when you're buying a property? You're buying a house. Are you scared that the realtor is going to get over on you or the seller is going to get over on you in a house purchase? Well, if it's not at the same level of, of, of buying a car, why? Well, you know, car dealers got a bad rap. You okay. Know All right. So what we're here to do and what you're here to do, I know that's, this is really, really what you want to do, right. is to change how things like that are perceived. Listen, I, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to call myself by the pioneer by no means. All I want to do is make a difference. That's I right. want to try to say, hey, I'm in the business. I'm not ashamed of what I do. I'm in business to make, make a profit like every other dealer, like every other business. But you know what? There's a fair profit. And more importantly, if you sell value in yourself and customers are getting a value for what they're paying for, mm -hmm. it's a fair deal. Okay. That's what needs to happen. And that's what I want to do my best. That's why we have the site. You want to talk about the site? Remember that number if you'd like to call in, one 866 Again, write it down, one 866 Four seven nine nine thousand. And if whoever was calling, please dial please back in. Back. If you're listening, right. we 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 tried to holler. Six um, common mistakes. We're going to talk about six common mistakes. We're going to talk about some things that that are important. But before we get into that, if you would, can we get into the website? And, That's and, right. and we we kind of talk about the website at the beginning. If this is the first time you're tuning in, um, we want to talk about the website, theautoschool.com. Um, and the reason why is because I can't cover, Selena can't cover in 30 minutes what you need to know about car buying. Right. It's not going right. to happen. Right. Um, We'd like to have more time on the show. We'd love to have more callers. So we've developed this website so you can go in after the fact. You may listen to the show on Saturday. You may be watching on TV on a Tuesday. Right. But, but you could go into the website 24 hours, seven days a week. Check it out on your own leisure. You can also listen to every show. That we've done. Every mm -hmm. show we've done. 13, 14 of them. Click on it if you're Click at on work. on podcast and video. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure. Let me cover some topics. Selena, you can cover some topics. Okay. I, I want to talk about a hot one that's okay. on the site. Credit. Yeah. Okay. If, if, if you've got credit issues, credit challenges, if your credit's just flat messed up and you need some help, you need some direction, you want to know where to go, how to buy, where should I buy, who do I trust, go to the autoschool.com, click on credit. It'll give you tons of information on credit. There's also a section right in the middle that basically um, identifies certain things that are on your credit, whether it's it's I've uh, been through a divorce, repossession, bankruptcy, collections, collection, mm -hmm. slow pay. You click on it. You identify the items that you have. You, you, you basically just document what you have briefly. Hit submit. That comes right to me. 
Okay. That comes strictly to me, and then I then will handle it appropriately by, by way of contacting you personally okay. or putting you in touch with somebody that can help you and assist you. And I want you to know something if you're listening. I've contacted some dealers. There's a lot of response going on right now. A lot of folks calling in. A lot of folks um, um, uh, emailing me. Mm -hmm. um, and what I want to do is um, I want to help you buy cars if I can. And, of course, I don't sell every brand. So right, right. what I've done is I've taken the time to contact some local dealers, some folks that I feel that I can refer you to, okay, that I feel like will take care of you, whether you buy or don't buy. The goal is to give you that wow experience. So you're networking with others. I'm doing my best. Right. I'm doing right. my best because I can't, you know, um, I know what I sell, but I, and, and people may want to buy automobiles through, through the show, and I want to make sure that these folks have, have a, 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 a good experience regardless right. of where they go. Right. So we're going to talk about the six common mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we always uh, recommend the shine shop, don't we, for callers? Shine shop. What's the shine, shine on it? Yeah, put the shine on the yeah. shine on the car. If you want to go to the shine shop, you call in. We'll give you a free uh, free wash shine shop. Where are you in the location? Where it's on Furious Ferry Road. Furious Ferry. Yeah. That's right next to uh, what's that restaurant? Uh, Locos. Locos. Yeah, right next door to Locos. Can't miss it. And um, so if you call in, we're going to give you a free Shine Shop card where you can go get your car washed. A great place. It's bling bling going on. Yes, sir. It's quick, <laughs> quick and easy. So we want your calls. Um, again, we're going to go to a break here shortly. We're going to talk about the six common mistakes. I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. Advertising. Yes. We're going to talk about what they say. We're going to what talk they about, say and what they do. We're going to talk about dealer profit. <laughs> All right. Ooh, the profit. We're also going to talk about uh, using the Internet or not using the Internet before you buy. Mm -hmm. um, and then talk about getting pre-approved. Okay. Um, setting realistic expectations. We're going to get into a lot of different things that, that you need to know as the consumer. Right. Let me tell you, I call them mistakes. And I'm and I'm engaging for the challenge, but I think they're mistakes because it doesn't help you. Pr it doesn't promote getting the, what you're looking for, which is the outcome. So when we come back, we're going to talk about six common, common mistakes, mistakes consumers make when buying a new vehicle. And we'll be back to the auto school. School with your girl Selena Soul 96.3 Kiss FM along with the expert in the car buying business, Mr. Louis Heron. We're going to talk about six common mistakes. The first one is not understanding what market value really is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Market value on your trade. Why would I say this is a common mistake? The reason why is because 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of car deals, when they come, when a, when a consumer comes into dealership, we're off on trade. Okay. We're off on trade. Let me tell you, we said this. Man, 13 weeks ago, 14 weeks ago, we were doing the, the, the show on trading. Um, a dealer is not going to give you more than wholesale on your trade. Okay. okay. We don't trade for cars retail. It's not going to happen. So it's very, very important, um, your perception, because perception is reality, right? right. And, and when we talk about the advertising that a dealer does, it's counterproductive. You know, and I got to, and I got to, it's even to all the dealers out there, myself included. We got to work better on what we advertise, how we advertise. Let me give you an example. We'll pay off your trade no matter what you owe. Oh, now I've heard that okay. everywhere. All right. And so, you have seen it in the, in the paper. Okay. So, so people hear that, right? <laughs> and, and they know they've been to a couple of the dealerships, and they know that they're $10,000 upside down. And so the light bulb comes on. They go, oh, man, they pay off my trade what it, regardless of what I owe. I can get out of my car. Well, the reality is technically, yes, we do pay off your trade no matter what you owe because we have to. I mean, you, you don't factor in a deal and not pay off the vehicle. Right. Yes, we do do that. But what you owe has nothing to do with the car's value. Okay. So in other words, if you owe 20, it's worth 10, and there's a $10,000 upside down scenario, you gotta come up with the cash, or we gotta convince the bank to do that loan for you. Or either does that put the $10,000 onto the new the car, oh, yeah. car you're gonna it, buy? If the, the, okay. if, the, if the bank will loan them the money for that, absolutely. Okay. So there's a, a, a what, I, what I would perceive as sets up the, per, <laughs> the expectation. How about pull it in, drag, drag it, it in, in, or tow, tow it, it in, in. Now right? that's... <laughs> So that when means you, any way you can get it there, you have no wheels. Just get so it when there. you when you hear that, okay, once again, yes, you can pull it, drag it, tow it. We'll come pick it up. It doesn't matter as a dealer. It, we'll do whatever it takes to make a car deal. Okay, <laughs> but when you hear that, that lends that lends again another another perception. That to me says um, even if the car is not working, it's just tow, it's just trashed. Right. We'll take it. So think about this for a second. You got a car in the front yard that's broken down. Broke down. Broke down, and you owe seven thousand dollars on a car that's not going to run. And you hear an advertisement that says, "Pull it in, drag it in, tow it in, and we'll pay off your trade no matter what you owe." And then you hear this next line: uh, "We'll give you six thousand dollars more than what it's worth." 
So it sounds like you're giving away Man, extra you're money. pumped. You're excited. You're, figured, you're okay. So you got to understand something here. And, and the only reason I'm going through this is not not to bash. Listen, an advertisement. Everyone listening or watching, an advertisement is solicitation for sale. That's all it is. Okay. Okay, it's a solicitation for sale. So, so you know, whether it's a, a Best Buy or whether it's Target or whether it's a dealership, they're they're putting certain coupons out there, right. certain rebates out there to entice and incentivize the daily or the monthly sale. Now, do you have people that come to the dealership and have the ad with them when they come from another dealership? Oh, sure. And they say, well, they said, absolutely, you know, we, I can do this. Absolutely. Okay. And see, there, there, that's where that's where the conflict comes in. Okay. Okay, and that's where the confrontation comes in when you're talking about setting up a realistic expectation. Mm -hmm. Forget what you see, forget what you hear. Here's what I'm trying to teach you. Here's what I want to help you so you can have a realistic expectation. When somebody says I'll give you $6,000 more than what the car is worth, they can they will truly show you a trade allowance of 6,000, but what you have to realize is that money comes from somewhere. Right. If General Motors is giving a $4,000 rebate and there's a $3,000 markup. They have $7,000 to work with in the form of a discount. Right. You tracking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So if that's the case and your car's worth nothing and I'm going to show you $6,000 is what your car is valued, I've got $7,000 to work with. So I show you the six thousand, and I still have a thousand dollars in profit. Mm -hmm. So it's still a win. You feel like you got six thousand more than what it was worth. Mm -hmm. They had that much room. When the reality is, what I want everyone to focus on in terms of developing what understanding what market value is. Here's the deal. If you go by this rule, you will be in line, and, and feelings won't get hurt, and you'll know where you they stand. They might need to write this rule down. Write this down. Go to theautoschool.com. Click under links. Go to Kelly Blue Book. Okay. Okay. When you click on Kelly Blue Book, I want you to p click on Trade In, and I want you to click on Fair Market Value. Okay. Not excellent, not good, not poor. Fair. fair. Okay. All right. Now, why would I tell you that? Okay. Fair Market Value is not going to give you the exact number a dealer is going to give you. Well, you may think your car is fair, but the dealer may have it as good. Well, let, let me let me tell you why I would say fair. I just want to educate everybody, right? Okay. Get the inside the inside dirt. Here's the inside dirt. We use Black Book, you know, NADA book, we use uh, um, auction reports and Fair Kelly Blue Book is going to give you what we call average black book, really really close to average black book. Okay. We don't trade for cars for clean black book. We don't trade we're trading for a car. Whenever we buy a car, the dealer wholesale, um, auction uh, lease turn in. We don't pay retail money for it. We've got okay. to sell it retail. We're right. in business to retail the cars. So, so you get it wholesale. That's right. Okay. All right. So the key is if you know what your car is worth, the flip side is to make sure you, if you're going to get wholesale for your car, because you are, it doesn't matter what we, what, what, what they show you on paper, you're going to get wholesale. Maybe $500 more than wholesale. The key is you want to make sure you buy the new vehicle, whether it's a new pre-owned or a brand new car. At you know at a discounted price, so you're trading wholesale to wholesale, or you know what I'm saying. You're you're making a you're making a fair purchase is what you're doing. You're making a good buy. Right. But when we do these things as advertising, and I include myself, you know, you know these are things that 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 lend um, the confusion. Let's, let's go to the to the next okay. common mistake. <laughs> this is the one we're gonna fight a little bit. Oh yeah. I think a common mistake a customer makes, a mm -hmm. consumer makes, is they focus on dealer profit not necessarily their best deal. Now tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right and, if, and tell me okay, why. Okay, you're right because I think, well, he's going to make a good deal off, off of me buying this car. Right. The dealership or the salesperson. Oh, I know he's making a good commission off of this car. Really? Right. I right. mean, that's how a lot of consumers think, me right. being one of them. Sure. Because, I mean, you go in with that, with that perception of, yeah, they're trying to get over it. He's going to make a good deal on me if I buy this car. So let me ask you uh, this. Let me ask you this. Let's say you're in the market for a home. Okay. And perfect location, perfect school district, everything lines up what you mm -hmm. need it to happen mm -hmm. for you and your family. It, perfect. And the house is a little more than you want to pay. Mm -hmm. But it's perfect. Okay. okay. And, the, and, the, and the, the seller won't deal with you at all. This is what I, this is what my house is worth. This is what I want to sell it to you for. And you finally you mull it over a week. You finally come to the conclusion. You know what? I've looked everywhere. This is what I want. It, it suits my needs. You're at the closing table, passing out checks. Who made what? You find out they made seventy-eight thousand dollars on their house. Mm -hmm. Do you feel bad about that, or do you not feel bad? I don't know. I don't, a, a house is different to me than a car. Okay. Well, I mean, to hey, me, I mean, I, I, I feel like it's a trusting thing. I think the whole thing with the car dealership versus the house is, is a trust thing for sure, me. Sure, sure. And with you and every and a lot of other folks. Yeah. But here's my point. I'm not trying to say that, that your feelings are right or wrong. I'm saying that I think when a consumer focuses on profit and not their best deal, I think it, it, it makes a very confrontational situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you do the research... 
you want to know what a deal, what's a fair deal for you. Well, um, that's what I like about the show because now, even me as a consumer, I've become more educated. Right. I've been, you know, inspired by you and motivated to go a little bit further, dig a little bit deeper, do some research on the car. So now I'm not really in the dark when I go right. to purchase a car. Or when I tell my friends and family, this is what you need to do. And, right. you know, we, the website is great. Go to the website, theautoschool.com. I tell everybody, I have friends and family all over the country. Use it as a tip that right. you need when purchasing a new or pre-owned car. So now that I'm, I'm more educated, I feel more empowered. When you have a low level of trust, your emotions are really high. Right. And when you have a high level of trust, you're you're not emotional, right. right? So I think that's the, and again, that's the inside dirt. That's what I'm feeling on on, on focus on dealer profit versus um, your best deal. And that's why I want to help you get the best deal so you understand. Right. So the first two tips we talked about was having expectations, proper mm -hmm. expectations, understanding what market value is. Right. We've covered that. How to do that. Okay. How to understand what market value is so you don't worry about what you see or what they're telling you. Forget what a dealer tells you. Go in and know. I'm telling you, Kelly Blue Book, fair market value, you're within a thousand bucks of what your trade's worth. All right. Like clockwork. That's good. You're really, really close. There's no confusion there. And the next thing is, don't focus on the dealer profit. Focus on the deal. Go okay. find out. Find out. Do the research you need and focus on your best deal. You know, and the last point I'll make to that is, let's just say you understood what, and we're cl we're closing this this little break here. But let's just say you found out what invoice was, and you found out what Kelly Blue Book was on your trade. You got what you wanted on your trade, and you got a $500 over invoice. Good deal, right? Mm -hmm. You're happy about that deal. Happy. You should be happy about that deal. But what if you found out that um, the manufacturer kicked back the dealer $4,500 for that particular unit because they hit so many? Are you mad at the dealer? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Well, <laughs> that's my point on profit versus deal. You got a good deal, got a good but deal. now all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're, you, you feel Car like you're Car buying is emotional. It is. And Car buying is emotional. It is. It okay. is. We'll be back. More of the auto We've school. got some more mistakes. Yeah, right here. Or not mistakes, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you're going to fight with me. <laughs> Back with the Auto School with your girl Selena Soul of 96.3 Kiss FM. And if you're tuning in, thank you so much for listening to us on 96.3 Kiss FM. And if you're watching us on your local television stations, the Auto School, we definitely like to thank you for that. I'm here with the number one car buying expert in the whole CSRA, number Mr. Louis Heron. You build me up. I know. I try. Uh, you do. You build me up. You build me up better than what I am, probably. That's you got it going on, huh? Louis. I well, just want to tell you that. Well, thank you. You know, because we, we all into the school thing, but you, you got it going on. All right. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, we're talking those that are joining us later just coming in just tuning in we want to talk about what catch you up to speed here we're talking about six common mistakes that consumers make when buying a newer used vehicle again when you say mistakes we're looking at it from the dealer perspective I'm trying to give you the right. inside clue of how what I think would help you when you come to the lot to help you get a, a good deal okay B feel very comfortable about your transaction you know and more importantly have fun okay, okay. so we're talking about that we talked about the first two which was uh, understanding what market value is we talked about not focusing on dealer profit focusing right. on your best deal Work your mm -hmm. best deal. Here's the third one. Not using the Internet before you buy. Okay. That is a huge, huge, and I can stand on a mountaintop and tell you a big mistake. Okay. With, all the, with all the research, all with the, tools with all the stuff that's out there today, there is... I'm in the business, and I'm just here to tell you, of course, I, I know the business, you know, inside and out. It, it, it would be... It's an... It's, I say this with all due respect. It's it. Well, I just say this with all due respect. It's easy to get a good get a good deal for a customer. They just don't know it. And I'm trying to help you. Getting a good deal um, is more. All it is is research. You can find out by doing research on the internet what car you want to buy, safety. Um, uh, depreciation values, what the car is going to be worth three years from now. You can find out what your trade's worth. You can find out what an invoice is on a car for crying out loud. I mean, it doesn't get any it doesn't get any easier than that. Um, you know, it's share with the with, with with the dealer what's your what's your margin, what you think they're what, what's fair. You can get a deal. Mm -hmm. You've got dealers out there that are so aggressive, that are so excited to do business with you, um, so excited to have the opportunity to earn your business. I'm telling you, c consumers are controlled. They don't even realize it. Right. Okay. Use the internet. Let me tell you something about the internet that people don't realize. Most dealerships, if they don't have an internet department, I would be very shocked. I'll tell you some ben benefits about the internet department. First of all, just here's an inside clue. Most internet departments in a car dealership are very volume driven. Okay. And let me tell you why. 
folks that get on the internet are fairly more savvy than others, mm -hmm. okay? Which means they're a little more they're a little more strict on on, on, on margins and what they're what they're willing to pay because they can stay they're they're it, they're researching everything. Right. So most most of the time the transaction is completed before you even come to the lot. Okay. Think about that for a second. You don't have the time to spend eight hours at a dealership. You don't want to go through the back and forth. You email an internet department at a car dealership. You say I'm looking for this particular model, this make. What do you have in stock? Okay, great. Can you email me what the prices are going to be? Can you email me what the monthly payments are going to be? Can you right. give me an idea of what the rate range is going to be? You've got access information. Yeah, because okay? that waiting at the dealership for well, a long time. Well, I'm telling you, and, and every dealership operates different. Mm -hmm. Some some dealers would never let you get a price over the internet. I, and I don't understand that, but that's that's how it goes. Okay. They wouldn't give you rates. There are other dealerships that are very willing to say, hey, whatever it takes to earn your business. Whatever you need. Because what most people realize in the car business is people are phoning in or coming on the Internet or coming to the lot for one reason. You know what that is? That's to, a good deal. Well, they're there to get information. They're phoning in to get information. Right. They're going to the Internet to get information. They're coming to your lot to get information. So we're conditioning ourselves as dealers to better ourselves to realize, hey, folks want to get information, they want to think about it. They want to digest it, then they want to come back. Okay? Right. Um, so it's very important to go to the Internet. Go the, to our website. Well, I was just about to say, theautoschool.com has everything you need to know. The other thing is, remember we talked about there's three parts to every car transaction. There's finance, there's trade, and there's a the car you want to buy. Those are the three factors you need to research on the Internet. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to tip the, the, the common mistake number four. <laughs> okay. Getting pre-approved at your local bank or credit union right. and coming in with a check. All right. I think that's a good thing. You don't? Nah, that's well. I'm gonna tell you some mistake. Okay. 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 So um, we definitely those again. We didn't mention. But we want to apologize again for those that may be trying to call in. The number eight six six four seven nine nine thousand. We're having technical difficulties, so please email us. Please email us we'll, at autoschool uh, we'll, we'll read them on air. But yeah, this is this is a big a big common mistake. Okay. I am by no means telling anyone who's listening or watching not to do their due diligence. Okay. Absolutely find out what the best rate is at your credit union, your bank. Find out that information. Here is the common mistake. When you walk into the dealership with, with check in hand, okay, you don't realize you may have left some money on the table. Twofold. Hmm. Your, your bank gave you 6.49. Maybe the dealer had 5.9. There's one mistake. You had no idea. So you get some of the money back, right? No, there's no money to get back. You got a check. You're giving the check to the dealer. You just missed out on, 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 on well, you just missed out on three quarters of three quarters of interest rate, possibly. Okay. But there's a there's a misnomer out there where people feel like if I pay cash, the dealer's supposed to jump through hoops. Well, I'm paying cash. Well, whether you pay cash to us or we get a check from the bank, it's all cash to us. It's all cash. Okay. It's not like it used to be. A cash deal really is not as beneficial to the dealer as. Uh, a finance deal. Why? Well, let me tell you why. You make your money off the finance. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Absolutely. When we do so many deals with captive lenders, like like if we have uh, Ford Motor Credit or American Honda Finance or World Omni Finance, Southeast Toyota or whatever, whatever, they give you for every contract you can get so many dollars back. Number okay. one, those are dollars we need. So when someone comes in with twenty thousand dollars cash or ten thousand dollars cash, that's just it. That's just the deal. And well, what I'm saying is, if we would have financed that vehicle, that may have been contract number seventy-three for us, which could have give going to give us a hundred dollars per contract back to the first one. Okay. We take all those factors in consideration when we're doing a car deal. So here's my point. Let's say you want to buy a car for invoice. You can't get the car for invoice, but you're going to finance with us, and your deal happens to be the hundredth contract through uh, Ford Motor Credit, which okay. which may pay the dealer a hundred dollars per contract. So now all of a sudden, the dealer by doing that deal, okay. we don't want. Say we want to sell the car for in, for five hundred dollars over invoice or a thousand over invoice. We think that's fair. You wanted to do two hundred dollars below invoice, which we may not consider that deal. But all of a sudden, you're the hundredth contract. We can pick up ten thousand dollars at month end. We may do the deal. Okay. No the, cash deal. These well, I'm not saying don't do a cash deal. Please don't misinterpret that. I'm just saying don't come in with a check in hand and say I'm done. I'm closed minded. Okay. You need to go and make sure you, you find out. Because these are things I'm trying to share with you. The dealer takes all monies in consideration when we're doing a car deal. They so may get make all the a little negotiating part done, then go get the check for the credit union. Absolutely. The bank. Okay. See yeah. What I would do, here's what my recommendation. You get your information from the credit union or bank. It's six point four nine. It's 6.9, whatever the number is. Find out what that is. Bring it to the dealer. Keep it in your back pocket. If we can't match it or beat it, get your money elsewhere. Get your money elsewhere. But if you come in, check in hand, could be an issue. All right. Thank you for tuning in to the Auto School, and we'll be back next week. Hey, folks.
folks, this is Brad, Big Country Thornton, coming to you again from Taylor Toyota. Hey, thanks for watching the show. You've been informed, you've been educated, now it's time to take action. What are you waiting for? You know what, you know the best deals, you've seen the best deals, now it's time for you to get off the couch, get in and take advantage of those savings, folks. Thanks again for watching and make sure you tune in next week. TaylorToyota.com or dial us at 1877. Go Taylor.